Hello everyone, welcome to our review of Alpha Mission 2 and Neo Geo Shmup by SNK themselves. Now I want to begin today's video with proposing a new term into the Shmup lexicon, that term being the Tactical Shmup. And when I say Tactical Shmup, I don't mean R-Type Tactics sort of game, I don't mean an RPG hybrid, I mean a specific subgenre within the genre of Shmups, which is essentially the reverse of the Donmaku bullet hell style of Shmup design. So where the Don Maku emphasizes complex patterns and dodging, the tactical shmup emphasizes suppressive fire and simple straightforward attacks, where the Don Maku level design emphasizes continuous onslaught and a building of pressure constantly gradually coming down upon the player in sort of a vice-like fashion. The tactical shmup does a sort of what I like to call shock and awe style level design. What is the objective? Shock and awe. Oh. What is the objective? Shock and awe. Where you're going through, it's quiet. It's too quiet. And then BAM! Surprise attack! And then you get through the ambush, you keep going through. You're in the eye of the storm, everything seems calm. And then BAM! Another surprise attack. And they sort of just come out of nowhere all at once. Then you fight for your life for three seconds, then calm. And then again, you know, and so that's sort of the tactical style shmup level design that you'll see in our type. A lot of old school shmups, but specifically this style of shmup, even Tatsujin even has a sort of thing from time to time. And why I want to specify this as its own sort of subgenre is because some of these principles are a little bit difficult to describe because when you're applying them to a bullet hell style shmup, usually they're a bad idea. But I guess when you're going for a more long form style of game, more of a console style experience then I think the tactical shmup makes a lot more sense and you see this style of level design much more popular among console shmups than among arcade shmups and that makes sense why because on the console the developer can take their time the developer does not need to get you off the machine as quickly as possible there's no sort of coin turnover concern whereas in the arcade they want the gameplay to be extremely dense and intense to get you satisfied, but to get you off that cabinet as quickly as possible. So to admit my bias, I'll definitely say that I'm much more of a bigger fan of the dense Don Maku style shmup design. That's something that I'll always probably connect with the most, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate from a design standpoint a more tactical style game, which this game definitely is. So Alpha Mission 2, let me give you an overview of how this game works. First of all, it has three buttons. It has an attack button, it has an armor select button, then it has the armor attack. No official bombs in this game. The game has bombs, but they're like grounded missiles like you get in Gradius, right? So don't think of them as like cave style bombs or just grounded missiles. And the way the game works is it kind of reminds me of if you took Aleste, you took Rayforce, and maybe some Tatsujin or something, and you shove them together. I think it's kind of how Alpha Mission 2 feels. First of all, it has the ground level stuff, but in my opinion, it's not quite the same as the way Rayforce works, where you're doing the sort of lock-on mechanic, and you're trying to get them through the transitions, and if you can take them out underneath, you can actually prevent fighting them from above. That doesn't seem to be the case here in Alpha Mission. It's just, are they on the ground? Or are they in the air? And a lot of the main sort of popcorn style enemies or whatever you call them, the smaller enemies, a lot of them are on the ground. Then the bigger like sub bosses and bosses, a lot of them are in the air, maybe with some ground parts. And when you tie them to the same button, so there's two control select styles, there's type one, type two. I always do type one because it seems to make the most sense. You tie the shot and the bomb together onto the same button, like you do in Gradius for the most part. Fair warning, make sure you have auto fire on your arcade stick or controller or in the emulator that you use to play this game because otherwise you're going to be hammering buttons and your hand is going to fall off. It does not have built in auto fire, unfortunately. SNK do not like built in auto fire in their games. They never do it. No metal slug, none of it. You have to actually have a turbo enabled controller in one way or another. So the way it works is you have the bombs you have the armor and then the armor is the special sauce of the game and what makes the game I think stand out and unique among its peers which is basically as you go through you'll collect the parts and you can put together the armor sets 
and then when you hit the armor option button you can go in and you can select them kind of reminds me a little bit of super mario world or super mario 3 where you can get the items in your inventory and you can have them drop down on you it's kind of like a weird sort of hybrid of that sort of thing but the armors think of them as more of attacks but they do provide you with literal armor when you put on the armor you have the energy bar on the left and depending on the armor type, that energy bar will act in different ways. And the, there's tons of different armor types, tons of different weapon types, essentially. It's kind of a cool combo of the two. And I'd love to see more contemporary shmups play with this concept where it doesn't necessarily have to be armor, but sort of like a transformation style thing where within a certain amount of conditions, you can turn your ship into something else. I think that's a really cool concept that the genre could do more of. So the way it works is depending on the armor type, if you fire, it'll probably drain the energy. Other ones, it's more like a shield. So if you take damage, it'll drain the energy. There's a ton of them. I haven't actually unlocked all of them. And the way it works is you're going through and there's these power ups that fall down. And it actually reminds me a lot of Twin B. Also, you have the air ground thing. I wonder if Twin B was a weird way, sort of a influence on this game. But the way it works is they fall down and they're either speed, missile, laser l i'm assuming l stands for laser i'm not exactly sure what it stands for and then g stands for gold that's money that you use at the shop at the end of the levels and you go through and if you don't want that one you'll shoot it and it'll fly upward and it'll change its type like you'll get in twin b and then i've noticed when it comes to the power-ups in this game gradius syndrome might be a bit of an understatement because as you're going through when you're fully powered up and you're fully armored up that is when the game feels at its best. That's when the game really starts to flow and you're like having a good time. But if you lose your armor, if you die, or if you collect basically a poison mushroom, I had no idea this was a thing, but I think in stage two it was, I was all armored up, I was kicking some ass, and I picked up a power up that depowered me, like the poison mushroom in Mario or something was going on there. So keep an eye out for that. But the crazy thing about this game is once you get depowered you are screwed you are going to have a rude time getting back because radius syndrome like i said is a bit of an understatement because even between credits you do not power back up so even if you try to credit feed your way through the game you're going to be in pea shooter mode all the way you're going to be in pea shooter mode for a lot of the time and i'm not sure how i feel about this i don't know if i like respect it because it's basically saying, okay, no, actually just reset the game. Or if it's just obnoxious, I'm not entirely decided yet. But so if you're playing through this game, and I'm sure as you're getting to the later stages, recovery is going to be really brutal. You can rebuy upgrades in the shops at the end of the stages. But unless you're just hoarding a bunch of gold or whatever, you're not going to even get a whole lot out of that. And like I said, this is sort of compounded by the level design of the game, which again is like the shock and awe sort of sort of style where you're going through and this game's pace is Irim level stuff. So do not think and you're going to be playing Battle Greg or something like that. Uh, uh, the pace of the game, the literal scroll of the game is glacial speed. But even on top of that, the waves of enemies, you'll go through long periods of just sort of flying around collecting power-ups blowing up little things here and there nothing really that challenging and then bam like i said ambush and some of the way the game attacks you uh i'm not sure if i'm a huge fan of it feels very sort of old school where you'll have enemies just sort of spawn out of the side of the screen so let's say there's a power up on the right side you fly over to get it an enemy just spawns and rams into you that happens quite a bit or Things will actually shoot really low on screen as well, so you got to keep an eye out for that. The game looks gorgeous. It's well put together, and there is a lot of game to get through. I've been watching like the most effective replays, and I think the shortest one that I saw is like 50 minutes long. It's these seven stages, but the stages themselves are a journey. It's quite the distance to get through them. They're very cool looking and they're varied and they're cinematic and the graphics it, it's nailing the presentation absolutely as far as the scoring system of the game i'm going to leave that a little bit more up to the comment section because coming into this review i actually spent a good number of days looking through the internet trying to find specific information about this game's scoring system and i really was not seeing a lot then i watched these high scoring replays but 
reverse engineering it didn't really stand out to me in the length of these things. They're just like going on and on forever. So I'm assuming the way to score well in the game is getting really acquainted with the exploits of the armor system and you'd see the players starting to use the armor in a lot of really clever ways. I think it's really about getting familiar with the different armor systems and making those do what you want to do, uncovering all the little spaces in the levels and being probably full power the entire time. That way you can really maximize the damage. Some aspects of level design weren't quite up my alley. For example, this game seems to really love the idea of using fully homing missiles. Like a lot of the fights, a lot of the level design, a lot of the stages really heavily feature fully homing missiles coming in at you. Luckily, there are speed items in the game, so you can get a good amount of speed. And then the aspect ratio, I should talk about that. It's a wide four by three aspect ratio. So it's a vertizontal. You're moving vertically, but you have a full horizontal aspect ratio. I can see why that aspect ratio makes sense in this game, because like I said, the pacing of the level is a little bit more deliberate. And there are plenty of times where you can tell the developers just like letting you look at the background like hey check out these bitch and waterfalls we made check out this really intricate mech ship that we put together like i said the sprite work in this game is really excellent and it runs really well and i just mentioned that of course i'm playing it in emulator i think you can get it on switch or whatever i'm not sure arcade archives it's probably going to be a little bit laggy arcade archives on the switch tend to be that way but i prefer to play all my neo geo stuff either in shmup arch or on the mister anyway Unlike stuff like Metal Slug or In the Hunt, this thing seems to run perfectly well at a regular clock speed. You're not getting a bunch of slowdown and messiness and that type of thing. So in conclusion, if you are a fan of what I like to call the tactical shmup design, which is slow, deliberate, a real emphasis on memorization, a real emphasis on planning how you engage with the systems like the armor system and using the armor tax and putting together your route and picking up all the items and knowing how the items interact with one another, building up your gold, where do I buy what at weapon when, all that sort of stuff. If you're really into that, this game is going to be right up your alley. But if you're more of a fan of the Don Maku style shmup design, Battle Grega even, where you want more immediate action, you want really dense, intense levels, even something like Ray Force. Uh, this game's probably not going to scratch that itch for you. I think this is much more on the R-type side of things. So I had fun with it. I enjoyed it. SNK, of course, are talented developers. It would be really interesting to have seen if they kept going and started doing more and more shmups and were more known for their shmup design rather than for their fighting game running gun properties. And this review is dedicated to JBRPG. A longtime patron and sort of the backstory for the review is he kept nominating this game every single month for a, like a year, but it just, you know, could not get off the ground kind of because it is a little bit more obscure. After a year of persistence, I said, OK, I'll go ahead and review the game. And then, of course, delayed doing so for months because my schedule is crazy, but it has been completed. Here we are. I hope you all enjoy it. Check it out if you're a fan of the console style shmup experience and maybe are a little bit more wary of bullet hells. This will be right up your alley. Adios, everyone. $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, B. Reality, Bo, Ben, Borky22, Ryan Schiffer, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climbing Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darren Griffin, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, Fantaside, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, J, Jason Allen, J Lab, JB RPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Crew, K, K2, KZ, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Larage, Malaise, Matthew Derigish, Maz, Megadeth859, Minang, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Nigel Y, Queen Charlene, Nathan Daniel Davis and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oakle Googles, Philip Mason, Psycho Blizzard, Rattlecat, Raul, Realskeen, Rip Mason, Robot Parking, Rolf015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Seven Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Sarah Pong, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Yutakoi Roots, Wappy Legs, and Yutakaya. Thanks for watching.